me living for the power and the riches Wondering if this addiction never stop Walking on the ceiling from the cars of my ambition Till my fall is more extended from the top My all is not to fit into a box So pardon my attendance, I will not Get lost up in your vision that is not in my position Yes, my heart is what you listen to, it knocks That's why I'm trying to ditch these flaws Yeah, Cause 16 bars can't fix these scars Moving through life, trying to flip these odds I look up to the sky, you can't list these stars From the shy both sides, that they hear me talk Really feel took a misky park I be lifting off till I levitate The switch too dark when I meditate In a better place when I'm Staying where the shadows is Dive and watch me swim through the shallowness Flying through the wind where my castle is Proving that we should be right Moving with the universe It's the essence of life Getting me high through the lows It's the essence of life Today, I'm going to show you the difference between flow and opacity in Photoshop. Ciao! Alright, hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And if you haven't noticed by now, we decided to turn our camera around. We've been working really hard on getting our studio, like actually looking like it's not just total crap, to be honest, and it's getting there. <laughs> so we decided to debut it in today's episode. So if you look behind me, you'll see our beautiful, this is like the real, you know in Jurassic Park, when they go and they're like, are these the real scientists who are making the dinosaurs? Well, it's like that here. These are the real people actually behind Flirt and they're, they're behind me and working and doing an amazing jobs. So this is the new studio and a new look on it. All right, let's go ahead and jump in today's episode. So today's episode is all about the difference between flow and opacity. Now those are settings for the brush tool. And we're making this an episode because the brush tool is one of the most commonly used tools in Photoshop. And the difference between flow and opacity is huge. And you can use that difference to your advantage when working in Photoshop. Now this is a Photoshop episode, but we're gonna be working with a brush tool. So in order to kind of make it a little bit more clear, I've got a regular pen or a brush, brush tool, pen, whatever you wanna call it, and a piece of paper to show you the difference between flow and opacity. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with flow. Okay, so the whole idea behind flow is that it allows you to build up ink as you go over an area over and over again, a lot like a normal marker would work on a piece of paper. You can see if I continue to like draw on this area over and over and over again, if I continue to cover the same place, it's just gonna put more ink down in that place. The more times I go over it, the more ink is gonna be put down in that place. And that's what Flow does with the brush tool in Photoshop. It allows you to go over a place over and over and over again and build that ink up. Now let's talk about opacity. This is a lot more of like a computer generated way of painting. So flow is very natural, right? It builds that up. Opacity is like computer generated. It's like pretend that I had this pen, but I only had half of it. And if I painted across my canvas, it would paint it like 50% visible. But as long as I kept going over the same area over and over and over again, it wouldn't build up. It's always gonna be 50% forever. The only way to get more ink on your paper is to let up your brush, or unclick your mouse and then come back down and go over the same area again and it'll lay another 50% down. So that's the basic idea behind flow and opacity. Flow is a more natural way of painting and opacity is a lot more of like a computer generated way of doing it. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop so we can see the difference at work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a new layer and I'm gonna use my brush tool. So here on the very top, you're gonna see opacity and flow. Okay, now notice right now they're both at 100%. You can control both of these at the same time. 
So let's go ahead and grab our black paintbrush, our foreground color is black. And as I paint with black, you're gonna see it puts down a lot of black. Okay, now let's see what happens if I put down my opacity. I'm gonna change this to 50% opacity. And I can do this by hitting the number five on my keyboard. Okay, so now we have an opacity of 50%. So you can see, I can actually see through this black. And remember how we talked about earlier, if I go over the same area over and over and over again, it's never going to add more ink. It's always gonna paint 50%. The only way to get more than 50% ink is to unclick and then start painting again. And you'll notice as I do this, what I'm getting is another 50%. There we go. And where they overlap, you'll see that's going to be 50% plus another 50%. And you can do it again. But it's not gonna be very natural. You can see the overlap very easy. So that's how opacity works. All right, let's go ahead and clear this layer, and now we'll show you what Flow does in Photoshop. So now it's time to change your opacity back to 100%. And a quick note on keyboard shortcuts. One through zero on the top of your keyboard is going to control the opacity of your brush. And if I hold down Shift and hit one through zero, that's gonna control the flow. Okay, let's go ahead and hit zero. That brings our opacity to 100%. Now I'm gonna hold shift and hit one, and that's gonna bring our flow to 10%. If I let go of shift and I hit the number four, then our opacity will be 40%. So one through zero, control the opacity, and shift one through zero, control the flow. Okay, so now we've got an opacity back up to 100% and a flow of 10%. So let's go ahead and see how flow works in Photoshop. So we've got our flow set to 10%, and you can see as I paint over my image, it doesn't put a lot of ink down, right? It's putting 10%. But as I continue to go over an area over and over again, you can see it's building that effect up. It's just like working with a marker. I'm able to build the effect up very, very naturally. So we don't get the harsh edges that we got when we were using opacity. So flow is a much more natural way of building up ink in Photoshop. All right, now let's say we wanna combine opacity and flow. Well, let's keep our flow at 10%. I'm gonna make my opacity 50% by hitting five. What this is gonna do is it's going to allow me to build up my ink. You can see I'm building it up here, but the stopping point is going to be 50%. So now I am able to build it up, but it's never gonna to get to 100. I'm painting with black right now, by the way. See, it's not gonna let me get to black. It's only gonna let me get to 50% gray. I'm gonna have to let go, and then I can start building up, and then it'll let me get darker. So you can use flow and opacity together to create different types of brushes. So what does this actually look like in the real world? Why do you need this much control over your brush? Well, the brush tool is insanely powerful, guys. It's the main tool you're gonna be using on Layer Mask. It's also the tool you're gonna be using on dodging and burning. So let's give you a quick little dodging and burning tutorial so you can see how building this effect up really does give you a lot more control in Photoshop. So jumping in Photoshop, we're gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna set that for normal down to soft light. Okay, now if I paint black on this layer, it's going to achieve the same effect as burning. So let me paint black right over here on top of this shadow. There we go, and you can see, it just makes that shadow a little bit darker, okay? If I paint white over the highlight, just like this, it makes my highlight a little bit lighter. Let's just make that invisible and then visible again. And that's how dodging and burning works, making some areas darker, some areas lighter, which allows you to get more shape and contrast and a lot more interest in photos really easily. Okay, now we wanna be able to build that up because I want a lot of control. Now, let's say our flow is set to 100% and our opacity is set to 50. Well, at this point, let's say I wanted to create this highlight right here on the top of her leg. If I click and paint in there, you can see all I'm getting is 50% visibility. And if I want more, I have to let go and start painting again and then let go and start painting again and keep doing that. All right, not only does it get annoying having them click over and over again, but it also gives you a result that doesn't really look that real. All right, so let's go ahead and see how it works with flow. So we're gonna take our opacity back to 100% and then I'm gonna hit shift one 
to bring my flow down to 10%. There we go. And now I'm able to paint over top of this leg over and over and over again. And I'm able to figure out where I want the highlight to be concentrated in my image. There we go. If I want to do my shadow, I'm just going to hit X to switch to black. And now I'm able to get a lot of control when I'm painting over top of my subject because I'm building this effect up as much as I want in just the places that I want. There we go. So let's go ahead and see the before and the after with that dodge and burn. We're gonna lower the opacity of this a little bit. Now keep in mind the opacity of your brush and the opacity of your layer are two independent things. You can have an opacity of your brush at 100% and you're painting and it thinks looks so good but you can still always adjust the opacity of your layer to be lower. So the layer takes control over the brush. The layer is the master opacity and the brush works inside of that layer. All right, let's go do a couple more examples. We'll just move right up here and we can define some abs a little bit better. All right, so we've got a flow of 10%. I'm gonna paint with white right over here. There we go. And then I'm gonna paint with black up here and kind of right down in there. And basically the more times I go over something, the darker that area gets. That's exactly how dodging and burning works or anything else you want to do from now on with the pen tool. Now that you know, there we go, the difference between flow and opacity. It's going to make you a lot better at working in Photoshop because you're going to be able to build up your effects much more naturally. All right, let's look at this before and the after. All right, so that's the difference between flow and opacity in Photoshop. Just remember these key things. Flow is gonna work a lot like a natural pen would work. The more times you go over an area, the more ink it's gonna build up. Opacity works more like a computer. It's gonna allow you to put a certain amount of ink no matter how hard you press, no matter how many times you go over it. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me here on Flurn. If you liked today's episode and you want to learn more about Photoshop and photography, it's really easy. There's a big subscribe button on your screen. Just click it and we'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And then you get to hang out with me. Then maybe someday you can come and meet me. I live in Chicago, by the way, in this beautiful studio. Well, I don't, I don't live here, but I'm here a lot. Anyway, thanks so much, guys. If you have an idea about an episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, leave it right down below in the comment box. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks a bunch, guys. We'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. And the difference between flow and opacity is huge, and you can use this difference to be... All right, and the difference between you... And the difference between flow and opacity... So let's go ahead and talk about... All right, so we've got flow and opacity, two completely separate items. All right, guys, so we've got flow and opacity. All right, so, cool. All right, guys, cool. Now this is a Photoshop episode, but it's, okay. And then a screen transition like flow. Now how flow works, all right. I actually need to set up my Wacom tablet preferences here because this is a new tablet and I haven't set them up. So I'm just gonna stop the entire episode and I'm going to do this for a minute. And there's nothing that anyone can do to stop me. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Thorn.com. <laughs>